Hello, everyone. There are no announcements for today. Uh, so will you please prepare your hearts and minds as we prepare for chapel with today's prelude. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Amen. I ask your prayers for all who live and work in the borough of Pottstown. I ask your prayers for all who govern and hold positions of authority, especially the mayor, the borough council, the governor, the president, and the president-elect. I ask your prayers for all whose lives have been touched by tragedy, whether by accident or by deliberate act. I ask your prayers for the sick. We pray for all who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and for all risking their lives to care for others especially with the record numbers of new infections across the United States and lockdowns in Europe. I ask your thanksgivings for those celebrating birthdays in this part of the week. Reina, Ava, Calvin, Annie, Derek, Namala, Ross, McKay, Brianna, and Leo. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. For your name's sake, amen. Our speaker this morning is Jamie Olson. Jamie is a four-year student from Gil Gilbertsville, PA. He is a prefect in Marco, a four-year SGA representative, and a captain of the boys' cross-country team, Jamie. Good morning. So Mr. Baum gave an anecdote from the epistle in his chapel talk. You might remember it. It was earlier in the year. It regarded a man refusing to evacuate during a flood with the belief that God would save him. Staying stubbornly steadfast in this belief, the man refuses help from his neighbors, a passerby in a canoe, and a helicopter. And the man dies in the flood. 
I've heard plenty of anecdotes from Mr. Baum over the years, but this one has spoken to me the most personally, as it summarizes perhaps my biggest weakness, which is asking for help. I hope the whole community can take something away from this, but I especially implore newer students to listen to my message, as it's something we all truly struggle with upon arrival at a school as competitive as Hill. So I'm from Gilbertsville, it's about 15 minutes outside of Hill, where I've been living with my family for my whole life. Going to Boyertown Area School District, not a bad school district by any means, but still rather unexceptional nonetheless. I never saw myself going to a school like this. In fact, it wasn't until I overheard other kids in my grade talking about Hill that I decided to figure out what it was. On a whim, I decided to apply, not expecting much, but knowing I'd regret not trying in the first place. And by some miracle, my name was drawn out of the pool of local applicants, and I got the opportunity to come to the Hill School. So in a whirlwind of a few months, I went from not knowing what the Hill School was to leaving my old school behind for it. I had fallen in love with Hill immediately upon arriving to campus for my first tour, and that feeling of awe remained when I came for orientation in the fall of 2017. So the school year got underway, and I was having the time of my life. I loved it here. Like every other new third former in the fall, I wanted to do and try and experience everything I possibly could. All this attention on everything outside the classroom inevitably led to a lapse of focus inside of it. I mean, I knew I wasn't investing as much time into my work as other kids, but who cares, I thought. I don't think I ever took a single note or studied for a single test at Boyertown, to be honest. So what would be so different here? So, spoiler alert, a lot is different here. And as fall turned to winter, I found myself barely keeping my head above water. As I slowly began to slip, I kept trying to justify my worsening performance in class. As the other kids in my math class sulked about having an A minus, I wondered how I had sunk to a C plus. With this kind of worsening performance came a huge decrease in confidence, which granted, third form me probably needed a bit of an ego hit, but my confidence was at an all time low. So finally, I had hit my low point after another math test of me practically guessing on pretty much everything. I mean, I certainly wasn't expecting anything spectacular, but I also didn't think it had gone particularly bad compared to other, any other test I had in that class that year. But once I got the test back, I saw how badly I had sunk. I got a 44% on that test. Pretty crazy. So never in all my time as a student had I ever received a score anywhere near that bad. And after receiving that, I was forced to confront myself. For the first time ever, I began dreading school. Every night as I prepared for school the next morning, a dark cloud of dread hovered over me. And that was the first time I'd ever felt that way, and it was a terrible feeling uh, for somebody who has always loved school. All this time, my parents repeatedly told me to ask for help from my teachers. All this time, older students tried checking in on me to question why I seemed out of it. All this time, my advisor tried questioning my class performance, seeing if I needed help. And every time I was confronted with a situation like this, Rather than actually doing something about it, I simply just deflected questions or lied, telling people I would seek extra help and then not actually making any effort to do so. Why do I need extra help, I thought. I mean, I'm a smart kid, I think, and smart kids don't go to extra help. If I go to extra help, I'd just be conceding that I'm not as smart as I think I am. Am I as smart as I think I am? These kinds of questions raced through my mind for a pretty big portion of third form year. I even started to question if being at Hill was a good idea. I mean, it all began to seem really arbitrary. I only found out about Hill by chance. I was accepted on credentials no better than any other local student who applied, and now I find my, found myself struggling to even do the bare minimum. I was pretty lost. So when I think about how I was feeling at this point, I remember the chapel talk given by the Hill trustee just a few weeks ago about luck. And I feel like what he said in that talk applies to my experience third form year. You might think you got to where you are out of luck. Sometimes I certainly feel that way, but at the same time, don't you create your own luck? For the longest time, I thought my getting here was completely arbitrary and simply due to luck. But in hindsight, this was probably just me trying to further justify not seeking to improve myself. If you've ever taken econ, you've surely heard Mr. Baum talk about using your resources most efficiently to maximize your potential. And I certainly had the potential to be doing much better than I was with so many resources being offered here. But strangely, even with those plethora of resources I had at Hill to take advantage of, I still thought no one could help me except for myself. And thinking back to that anecdote I mentioned at the beginning, I certainly had the neighbors, the man in the canoe, the helicopter, and more to bring me out of the flood. And I rejected all that help, <clears throat> and that was my downfall. So why do I share this with you today? 
I want to share this because I don't want this to be you. I know that I wasn't the only one going through this kind of situation. I know that many new students feel this struggle every year. I'm certainly not trying to say that you shouldn't be struggling like this. In fact, it's inevitable for most students. You likely will not be hitting the ground running as soon as you get here. That's something that took me a little bit to figure out. What I do know, though, is that you don't have to go through that alone. When your friends and peers ask you how you're doing, tell them the truth. I guarantee you they want to hear it. And they might not know exactly how to help, but I can say for certain that it will feel good to get it out. When your advisor wants to help you, let them help you. They're there for a reason. When you say you'll seek extra help, actually do it. There's a reason why teachers live on campus here. They, of course, have their own lives to tend to, but it's their job to help you, and they're more than willing to help. Trust me. This is one of the things that differentiate a school like Hill from a regular public school. When I came to Hill, I had teachers who I could tell truly wanted to be teachers for the first time in my life, and that was a pretty incredible feeling. These people want to help you, I promise. So even if you don't believe this, your parents pay tuition so that you can get these kind of resources. So to not take advantage of them is simply a waste. It would be a shame if you came out of here not taking advantage of those resources. Furthermore, one of the most important things I've learned in my time here is that asking for help does not mean you are not smart. In fact, the kids doing better than you in class are likely in that position because of their ability to use the resources offered to them. And you may at times question your place here. I know I certainly did at times. If no one's told you this yet, let me look directly at you and be the first. You belong here. You're here for a reason. You've created your own luck. You might still be questioning your purpose here, but I promise that will become clear through time and hard work. Struggling academically is pretty much inevitable at a place like this. Like anything else in life, with the good days will certainly come the bad. Struggles like these do not by any means suggest that you don't belong, but rather that you need to reassess your approach. It probably took me two years to figure that out, and it doesn't have to take you that long, and it doesn't have to be that hard. Don't let those moments define you. Rather, let them change you for the better. Let them not be times for self-deprecation, but for self-reflection and growth. The sooner you can swallow your pride and seek help, the sooner you can expand your possibilities. And maybe you're not struggling academically. Maybe you're struggling in other areas. Maybe you're struggling to make friends. Maybe you're really homesick. Maybe you're struggling with the demands of your afternoon activity. As you've already noticed, it is really, really hard to find balance and juggle all your responsibilities here. And that's why we have leaders. Your captains and your prefects were in your shoes at one point, and your coaches know that your life is more than just a sport or an activity. So use these resources to your advantage. I promise what you're going through will seem so much less scary when you hear someone else who went through the same thing. And I promise you, we did. For older students, even if you don't consider yourself a leader, you can do more by being available for others than you can with pretty much any tangible leadership position. I mean, take it from me. After being an SGA representative for four years, two years of being a team captain, I feel like I've contributed more to the community in the past three months than I had in the past three years, probably. Why? Because I listened, and I took the time out of my day to be there for people, and I showed younger third formers in my dorm that I was there if they needed me for anything. And I realized being a prefect made that a lot easier to do, but you really don't need a title to be that kind of leader. So be considerate, be compassionate, be helpful. If you see a friend or just anyone in general who looks like they're having a bad day, ask them if they're doing all right. So here's what I want to leave you with today. <clears throat> this place means so, so much to me, and it's going to forever. But it's not because of the place itself. It's because of the people that are in it. There's so many people here, I'd name them, but there's simply too many to name, that have helped me shape me into the person that I am today over the past three years. And for that opportunity to meet those people and to learn for them, from them, I am forever indebted to this place. You know, I think about all the amazing people that I've had the opportunity to meet and work with here, and I'm absolutely in awe of some of the people I meet here. And for this place, I am truly, truly forever grateful for that. So it's my hope that I've been able to be that kind of person for at least somebody as an upper former. And there's going to be a day very soon where the class of 2021 and I will no longer be here. But it's my hope that the classes that follow us can be the same kind of leaders that I had in my time here. So 
to wrap this up, you might think you're doing fine on your own, but the most progress is made when people work together. So let's work together. Accept help, be there for others. Let's look after each other. Let's make ourselves available for each other. Let's make this place what makes it so special. So as former SGA president Drew Sotosanti used to say, go take care of each other and have a nice day. Thank you so much. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.